guys and welcome to another edition of the Daily Dose. Today we're going to be talking about some equipment for your blossoming photography buddy. This guide isn't really particularly specific to either Canon or Nikon or or Fuji or whatever mirrorless. It's This is more of a generic guide of stuff you should probably get if you're into or if you feel like you know you're getting serious about this photography hobby or you know you you just want to be you just want to be able to take capture better photos or videos right off the bat i kind of wanted to recommend something um, that is a great thing to have even if you don't really need it you know just as a backup when you first got your camera equipment you probably got something that uses SD card. Probably your laptop also had an SD card slot, but as we found out a little bit late last year, sometimes when you upgrade your system on your laptop, it's not really a great thing for all the gadgetry on it. The SD card slot would no longer function after upgrading to Windows 10, so ugh. So we had to go out and get SD card readers or like a card reader. Now, lots of card readers out there on the market, definitely you can get anything. But there's this one particular one that I got from CDR King. It looks like a little pill, honestly. And the cool thing about this is, number one, it's super cheap. Super, super cheap. Like literally 70 pesos, maybe 60. And the cool thing about it is it comes in this sort of sealed off case kind of deal. Uh, so if you take off this cap, that's the USB. And this side opens up and there's your SD card. Now. Uh, it's nice because it houses all of that. It seals all that, so that's pretty good. It keeps your SD card safe. The other cool thing I like about this particular SD card reader is that it has an LED indicator. And those are always really good to know whether maybe it's a USB port that's messed up or whether this thing is actually working or not. Now, it doesn't really have to be this particular card reader. This one is the TM-C101. My point only here being that you should have a spare card reader in your bag just in case the main card reader you use right now fails. As they always say in photography, two is one and one is none, okay? So better to have a backup. These single purpose card readers are great because they're inexpensive and they're a great way to take your footage from your camera or your photos from your camera to your computer. So big thumbs up for this little thing. The thing we're gonna be talking about is camera supports. Now camera supports come in a wide variety of options, okay? You can either look like this, this uh, lightsaber looking thing is actually a monopod. Kind of reminiscent of your selfie sticks, but they're not really. This is meant to get on the ground and keep your camera supported here, okay? So it's more like a staff than a selfie stick. This is definitely not something you want to wave around because outstretched like that, that gets kind of heavy. And it's a great way to keep a very heavy lens stabilized while still maintaining freedom of movement. Now for videography folk though, that's not gonna cut it because well, you know, videos require better stabilization. So for that, you probably want to get a proper tripod. <sighs> and I don't have a proper tripod here, but you get the idea. Though for more creative shots, you could also go with something like this. Uh, this is a Gorillapod. This one is a knockoff. We've talked about this before. This one came from CDR King. It only costs like 700, 600 bucks. And it's a good way to get a very, very low angle on a shot. Man, I wish I had the tripod here. Hold on, let me get a tripod for you guys. Okay, for your more serious videography needs, you probably need something like this. This is a Manfrotto tripod. This supports up to like 15, 20 pounds. The tripod itself is only important because it should be able to support the weight of the camera that you're using. But where real magic is, is in the head. This is a fluid head. And that's important because gives you great panning shots, smooth as butter. But that's only if you're super, super, super serious about <laughs> videography, but otherwise it's really heavy. It's a pain in the ass to carry around. Uh, ah. The whole point of that entire segment is that 
camera supports are integral in getting better output, like what we're doing right now. This is set up on a tripod so that it doesn't keep shaking around because if I handheld this, it would constantly be shaking like that because the human hand not designed for holding things for very long periods of time. Not at all. <laughs> so depending on what kind of photography you do uh, or videography you do, any of these things could be important. But the whole point is that you should get at least one in your camera bag just so that you have it in case you need it. Again, better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So that's all about camera supports or stabilizers or yeah, camera supports. The last thing I'm gonna be talking about is this lens, this lens. The Canon 50mm f1.8, also known as the Nifty 50, also known as the Plastic Fantastic. Why is it called the Plastic Fantastic? Literally everything about this lens is made from plastic, except the glass, of course. Let's do a quick pros cons of this kind of lens. So if you notice, it only says 50 mm, whereas your lens on your camera probably says something like 18 to 55. What that means is this is called a prime lens or a fixed zoom lens or a fixed lens. It doesn't zoom in. It just stays a very particular field of view. That is both limiting and liberating because it forces you to have to move closer or further from your subject depending on the framing that you want. Now, why this particular lens? Well, this particular lens I recommend people to get. This is a good lens. It's super sharp and it's cheap. It's only like 4,000 something. I know that's not really super cheap, but it's affordable. You can you could probably save up for this pretty quickly. There's also a version from Yung No, Chinese brand. It's basically an exact replica of this and the Canon version is only like 2,000 bucks. So go figure. Now, the other reason this lens is a very good buy and why you should definitely get it in your arsenal next is because of its aperture. If you don't know what aperture is, I have another video, a link to it down below, explaining what aperture is. Go click that. Um, but effectively, it's a very wide aperture, allowing you to get those really creamy bokeh shots. Here, let me show you. So right now, what you can probably see is a f me in focus and the thing in the back slightly out of focus. But that was only because the aperture on this lens right now is set at f4. That's as wide as it can get, okay? Now I'm gonna switch over to the new lens, okay? So that self same, so that same effect you saw earlier with me being in focus in the background, slightly out of focus, is exaggerated when the aperture becomes lower. So this is now set at F, like F2. So earlier was F4, this is F2. So the thing in the background is now much, much blurrier. And that's kind of the effect that having a wide aperture lens gets you. The avenues here for creative expression are much, much, much better now. It allows you to isolate the subject that you want and it allows you to just do a lot of nifty stuff. It's also, it's a lot closer compared to the zoom earlier. And that's probably one of the biggest limiting factors of this lens is that, I mean, the zoom it has is pretty far and you can't really zoom out because it's a fixed lens. Pros and cons. Um, but again, it gets you this amazing bokeh effect that like or stuff in the background basically gets blurred out. It will allow you a lot more creative expression, but again, trade-offs. Very, very narrow. So like, it's pretty close to the face. Should I switch back to the other lens? Nah, I guess that's it for today's show. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you have any questions or if any have any comments at all of any of the equipment we talked about during this past three episodes, please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons down there. If you don't follow me on Facebook yet, do so. There's a link also in the thingy down there. So, you know, shoot me a question on Facebook. What did you think of all the equipment that we have here? And is there any tech that you got last Christmas that you can't live without in the new year? Yeah, and thank you very much, guys, for tuning in. Don't forget, tune in every day at 9 a.m., for a new episode of Daily Dose. We'll try to make it as interesting as possible. I will see you guys tomorrow. Until then, stay safe, and you guys stay awesome.